Okay, cool. Guys, thank you so much for coming here today. We did a panel here with Jay last March and he did an absolutely terrific job and he was so kind to let us do one here today for the Irish Maker podcast, which we are recording and we will be showing on our YouTube channel. Uh, Vicky and Mick are down there. They're recording everything. They're absolutely brilliant. Introducing our panelists, we have Team Emerald, always amazing, Jay and Emily. Over here, we have Marie Trace from Empty Cosplay, always great stuff. And as a special guest, we have Olga from Oliver Chest, all the way from Ukraine, who's gonna be telling us all about different cosplay techniques. So I'll be asking a number of community questions and then open questions to the floor, and we can all have a nice conversation and see what we wanna talk about. As I said, you can find the panel on the Irish Maker Podcast YouTube channel. It's gonna be recorded and you can see it there. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into the questions. We got a wide range of questions from you guys, from Discord groups, from Facebook groups. Uh, some questions I got in the hallway and I've kind of been chatting to people over the last few weeks and everyone's just been really, really cool. There was some very funny ones. There were some ones I'm not going to ask. <laughs> uh, but most of them were just really, really chill and they're really, really nice. So to kick off, the first one comes from Michael. Uh, I'm going to start this way. How did you get started in cosplay? This is a really exciting story. Uh, we came here in 2015. We got bored. People in the costumes looked very excited. So we came in 2016 in costumes. The end. <laughs> Same. <laughs> no, really, that's not even an embellishment. Yeah, that's all that there was is, to it. Yeah. It just started like super organically. Yeah, it was like everyone looked like they were having fun. So we were kind of getting bored of the same thing over and over again. You know, we're just going as normies or whatever and muggles walking around and we were kind of a bit bored and it's like, well, all these people are always having fun. What's the common denominator? Costumes. And you just kind of snowballed from there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Avalanche. A little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a peak you're like, oh, it's good. It's fun, 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 fun. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. that's, that's basically it. Perfect. And the other side. When you own more tools than spoons, you got a problem. <laughs> I actually got like I had to get a spoon there this morning because I couldn't actually open up. I had this like salad, and I was like asking around and like Eat three people. And well, I had nothing else, and like three people were like. <laughs> Anyone oh, else find that weird? I no. have my everyday <laughs> carry fapoon, and I was like, "What's a fapoon?" And they're like, "It's half fork, half spoon." And I was like, "Why do people have fapoons?" No, no, there were fapoons. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what about you, Marie Trace? I don't, can we really actually go away from that conversation? Sorry. Um, <laughs> I probably don't need to like stats or something, let's be honest. Um, for me, I started, I came to a few cons in 2017, was like that as well, seen some fantastic cosplayers, and I was like, do you know what? Next time we'll do that. So, end of 2017, I kind of got an idea of what to make. And then when it came to DCC anime version, which was on the 1st of April in 2018, first cosplay. And you what are we up date? to? Eight? Nine today, first, yeah, April Fools. I was an April Fools cosplayer. Uh, um, so we're up to this is eight or nine at this stage after all those, and uh, that's what started for me. Seeing other cosplayers being like, Do you know what? That's fantastic, and then contacting other cosplayers online and be like, Where do you get your stuff? What are you doing? And they're like, Oh, maybe you should start small, do something with fabric. Nope, <laughs> I went straight into, into foam and started doing mad builds, and nothing's changed. So there you go, yeah, that, that's it for me, and we're still going. What about you, Olga? How did you get started? Uh, so basically, weirdly enough, I got interested in cosplay before I knew that cosplay was a thing, you know? <laughs> because I was playing games from my early childhood and, you know, at some point uh, I just wanted to bring something from those, you know, games or whatever, like, into real life. So I started, like, making, like, little pendants, like, something like that. And at that point I found out that people actually do that, you know? <laughs> And they do much more. They do armor, they do like swords, something like that. So yeah, basically I started trying different ways to make it work. And at that point I didn't even like look up any tutorials. I just tried to make it work the way I thought it might, <laughs> you know? Uh, but yeah, then later I got introduced to actual cons because uh, again, back in Ukraine, in 2000, like, I think 2014 was the year where we actually started having actual cons, you know, like actual conventions, actual festivals. And I just visited a couple of them. I got excited there. I saw cosplayers. I knew that, like, okay, so there's this community that I can join and I want to join it. So, you know, I started easy. I started just like um, Wendy from Gravity Falls. So basically, you know, not much things that I needed, just like a hat <laughs> and that's it. But yeah, then it was like, okay, that was fun. 
now I have to do armor, you know? <laughs> and that's how it all started. It just kind of spiraled out of control. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Seems to be a, a kind of a common narrative up here. <laughs> it's like, oh, it started as a great idea. Is it still a great idea? Well, that's debatable. <laughs> uh, here's one. So this is from the Cosplay Community Ireland Discord. And they asked, when going to cons and going on public transport, do you wear your cosplay or do you change into it when you get there? For us, I think it really depends. Yeah, it's very it. much depends. Yeah. We've done um, both. We used to stay out at the right cow for this all the time. And most of the time we did just get changed in a hotel, get on the Lewis, it's fine. Uh, I recently went through London as Soldier Boy. Right through it, I was in the busiest sta train station walking around there. Luckily, it's before the season came out and they found out why he was in train station. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, no one really bats an eyelid. At, at worst, they're like, oh, it's the weirdos again. Must, yeah. be, must be me. You know? I think for, like, for us, I think we prefer to get changed like either at the convention I'd rather not travel in cosplay, but that's just because. It all depends on what you're doing. If it's harder to walk in, you don't want to get you know get it ruined beforehand. But like even in London, like we got some banter one year going to are we, are we the superhero, the and the train driver. the train driver literally made an announcement on the train to say like no superheroes allowed on the train or whatever. <laughs> you know, so it's like you know my, it, it gives good banter. My favorite know? one, and I'm gonna tell it That's now. Rude. There's no kids here, so I can't tell it. Um, and I I leave out the expletive so you don't get demonetized. We were coming from the right cow, I believe it was Green Arrow, Speedy, Supergirl, and Constantine. And someone goes, there's Super Baby and Harry Bleep Potter. <laughs> a bunch of builders having breakfast. And yeah, besides. Living their best life. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm sitting there mortified. Like. <laughs> Is that on the Lewis? Uh, it was on the way to the Lewis, yeah. There's a little cafe that. next to the right cow there. Oh, and builders lo locally go to that, because there's nowhere else you can get a drink. Enough. What about you, MT? Um, for me, I, I drive thankfully, but for I will I'll get ready at a con if I can. How are you gonna wear this in the car? That's not safe. <laughs> <laughs> getting pulled over is like, what are you doing? And just just pull the sword or something like that. Um, but no, I, I prefer to get ready here. Um, any time that I have gotten transport and stuff like that, it's the cases and stuff like I, I can't do it. I even trying to put them on a bus, nah, it doesn't work. But I put them in like under no. Nope. I have the case I have today isn't too bad, but I usually have my giant red one, and I've never seen one the size of it anywhere before <laughs> or since. It's one of those novelty ones you yeah. have a look at, and you're like, no one <laughs> uses that. No one's going to use that, and even the costumes still don't fit in half the time. Um, but no, I, I would drive, it's much easier for me, um, so I, I, I avoid that kind of stuff, and it's much easier to get ready at a con and have people actually help you. It's like, that's not right, okay, fix it, instead of something happening on the way. Clear. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, like I had this situation where I was on a subway in a costume, and it's kind of fun, you know. People look at you like you're crazy, you know. <laughs> so yeah, that's an entertainment. Uh, but you know, like it depends on the costume because, again, for example, like Magara's costume, I wouldn't be able to go to any like public transport in that thing, you know, because it's massive. It's you cannot sit. It's very risky you know to you can just like damage your costume mm -hmm. on the way there so of course like I, I feel like if that's armor or something like you know heavy costume I would rather put it on con if it's something you know easy something like maybe uh, uh, you know closing like uh, the the sewing costume basically that might be fine but you still want to be careful you know <laughs> just in case, just in yeah. case you know <laughs> people may react differently <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so from the Facebook community group, this was this question was actually asked a few times. I think it's really, really good. Is cosplay a hobby you see yourself doing in 10 years? Or do you think there's a ceiling on the age for cosplay? No. Definitely not. Mm. They, I think the most prolific cosplayers I've ever seen are called cosplay parents. They're a Korean couple in their 70s. Oh, wow, 70s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not if, incredible. If you, if you yeah. Look them up, <laughs> they're so cute. Yeah. So, yeah, no, definitely not. No, definitely not. Like, yeah, we, like, we got into the older as well. Yeah, we like, so definitely could have started younger. You'd have a bit more time on it and you'd have wasted less time sitting on the couch going, what will we watch, what will we play, what will we watch, what will we play for two hours? I think getting tired by the time we made the decision. But, yeah, definitely no ceiling. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really good to yeah. hear. What do you guys? I need to believe that, Nathan. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I need this. <laughs> Please, I need this. <laughs> um, no, I, I completely agree. I mean, it's fantastic even to see today so many new cosplays of 
all ages and people coming over asking questions and everything and no there's there's i don't believe there's any limit on anything in relation to cosplay you do you whatever you want to do and mm -hmm. um, no matter what age or anything at all just yeah what's the point like if you want to do it you do it it's a hobby for most of us kind of thing or some of us are just psyched to make stuff too and spork on um, <laughs> it's a consistent trend <laughs> just, just for me. um but no whatever age and whatever you want to do you do you and have a great time at a con and meet loads of people and socialize and everything which is what we all do yeah you know? And imagine, if you retire, you get so much free time to actually do those <laughs> costumes. <laughs> this is a good point. <laughs> yes. So yeah, definitely. I think like, uh, especially, you know, media is a vast resource and you can find character that will suit any age, mm -hmm. you know, any person. Uh, and you can do whatever you want, you know? So why stop at like certain point? Just do whatever you want and it's fun, you know? It's fun and it's great to be in this community. Good answer. So this comes from James. I think this, I think Jay, this is probably very suited to you actually. I think you'd be able to give a really good opinion on this because I've seen this question bounce around and it's very much homemade cosplays versus commissioned or bought cosplays. Is there a difference in the community? Do you think people look at it differently versus those who buy versus those who build? Here specifically? In, in the community in general? Uh, definitely in the Irish community, nobody cares. Definitely not. I can be honest. We're so laid back here, nobody knows the difference half the time. So, I mean, you know, as makers, sometimes it's, that, that, that can hurt a bit, but I mean, at the end of the day, we're doing this to enjoy ourselves. So, I mean, yesterday, I was, that costume I was wearing, everyone was going, oh, how'd you make this? It's the first time in, since I started, I bought that and weathered the crap out of it because I have a real person job now and Richie's, I don't have a life anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, finding the time to do this stuff, especially sewing, I'm slow at that. And it, it annoys me, so at this point, I kind of like have to suck it up and say, well, I don't have the time to sew myself. Someone else is going to have to do it for me. Mm -hmm. Have you found much of an uptake at the kind of commission side of the business? I did until starting to work full time. When I was working part time, I was also part time making commissions, which I still have a load of them finished by the end of the year, and I all of a sudden don't have the time to do it. This is what I'm doing for the next three weeks. But uh, I mean, at the end of the day, somebody is making it somewhere, right? That's it. You That's know? the guess. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the game. Uh, it's every time she say, it says the word homemade, it's like it's everything is made at home. Now. That's a really good way to look at that. Yeah, rats live in those warehouses. Man. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Definitely oh, demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> what about this side of the table? Um, for me, um, I mean, I went kind of straight into it with making stuff myself. But the amount of people like Jay and with that, that as well have said how I mean, let's be honest, th this, this group actually got started with someone had said to me at a convention I was wearing Cassandra about, I could never do that. Of course you could. Of course, everyone can. All you got to do is try it. And if not, it's trial and error. I believe, you know, mistakes are part of the whole, of the whole thing. That's how you learn. Um, and then we had discussed about setting up a group and we set up the Facebook group and then it came on to this. This is like, we'll do podcasts and stuff. Not podcasts, we'll do our, our, our panels and stuff with it as well. And then the podcast and everything today. Um, but I, I genuinely, I don't, as long as someone's doing it and enjoying it, whether they bought it or whether they made it, I personally, I love to see things that people have made. If they bought whatever, but they've made something even small mm -hmm. for it. It's incredible. You've made that. You get to show it off and you can say, oh, I bought this. And I'm like, I don't mind. You, you know, that's fantastic. You're here. You're enjoying yourself. And even if it's just like a little pin or something, anything at all, you made that. That's a part of your cosplay. You're now here. You're showing it off. And I think it's incredible as well because I noticed even people yesterday in that previous con where they're being asked for a picture. And you can just see that they're so excited and shocked that I've just been asked for a picture or something that I'm in. Um, and I think for some of us that we get to ask, that we just take it for granted to some extent. Um, but I think it's fantastic to see. And if you've made even the smallest thing or bought it or whatever you want to do, as long as you're having a great time, that to me is, is the perfect con for people. Yeah, like, I feel there, there is like two sides of this story. Because on one hand, I definitely agree, it's about fun. Cosplay is about having fun, about like meeting amazing people who share this interest in making something, you know, incredible with you or like, you know, just maybe like comparing and sharing advice on this. So that's a great stuff. One thing I wanted to mention is when it comes to contests, I feel like it's more fair when the contestants actually make their costumes. Because, mm -hmm. you know, like, 
it wouldn't be fair if somebody just like bought something really expensive, came to a contest and like rocked it, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I feel that there is like two sides for this story. But definitely like for just, you know, wearing costumes at con or making photos or whatever, you know, I feel like you can do whatever you want. Like you're just having fun. If you want this particular character and for example, like, you know, you cannot do that or you don't have time to do that or whatever but you want to be this character for like, you know, for some time, that's totally fine. Like who would stop you, you know? <laughs> it's a different, is it different in, like you guys have traveled an awful lot. You've been mm -hmm. in London a lot. Is there a different attitude over there or is it, how did you experience that? Yes, yes, and, yes yeah. and no. Um, I mean, you don't want to put things in, but like no. I can tell you straight, the cons in three different countries now, the Irish crowd are definitely the most friendly. Oh, really? But they're definitely the most open. Everyone here will approach you and talk to people. People kind of, in England, they stick in their groups of friends and they smile. In and then later tell you online that you look great and stuff, but they're a lot more reserved. So it's hard to tell. Um, mm -hmm. But it does come with that come segregation in that. So you'll often see the big, huge groups that meet up that they all bought their cheap Marvel costumes and just wanted to have fun, meet up that way. Yeah. And then you'll have your very small group of makers that are basically running all the competitions and stages that, mm. that those other people aren't interested in in part of. So it's hard to tell because, I mean, we're all meshed together here, you know. How many of us were at dinner last night, you know? Oh, that's at the it. restaurant, you know, that's just, just how we are here. And this is um, a different layer of that. Uh, and in, Germ yeah. in Germany, there's no segregation because it, Germany, like their cosplay community is based around old players. They're all LARPers, so they all make everything. Or they, they don't do really bulk costumes over there. So, I mean, that conversation isn't really to be had there. Because there's not a big LARP community here in Ireland, as far as no, I'm aware. No, there's a no. small community that would be... Well, yeah, they're outside bashing each other around right now, funnily enough. Actually, that's what we all want to do. <laughs> um, I, I, kind of following on from this, in a way, this question comes from James. Um, I thought it was the last one. Is that the uh, same no, James? Uh, James is a... <laughs> common name. Yeah, it's a very common name. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm, try I'm trying to like not make it too obvious for who these people are. But the question came up, and I think this is very, very true, because it happened actually when I first entered a, a competition. People were like, oh, that's 3D printed. That that's oh, doesn't gosh. count. That hmm. doesn't count. And the question is, is 3D printing cheating? As there's a lot of stigmatism about 3D printed costumes. A lot of people think it's cheating or that you didn't make it yourself, etc. That's quote for quote. Well, I guess, like, I think in terms of competition, you know, you, if you're entering a piece and you, you know, bought one of the finals and printed it, you know, you, like, you, you might have finished it, you might have, like, sanded it, you know, you, you might have done that bit to it, but, like, you didn't I think there's there's layers to that. Mm. You know mm. what I mean? It's not necessarily cheating or anything like that, but this it, it, it's is just... another question that has two sides to it. Yeah, yeah. It's, you def know. it's definitely not cheating, but I would value it as a, if you're talking about competition as a judge, if a guy came in and he 3D, 3D printed something and it was absolutely perfect, looked exactly like the movie, and a guy came in and he 3D printed some of it, made some of the foam, sold some, and it was a little less than perfect, but this is a maker's competition. That second guy. That second guy would get it. Guy would get it because you know. there's, there's more made in that. But it's it more mean techniques. Other, but it doesn't mean the other yeah. guy cheated. I mean, that's no different to, like, this. we've done panels about competing and stuff, and you could talk for days about this, but it's no different to the fact that, say, someone dresses up their anime character. That's all the sewing thing. It doesn't mean they cheated because they did that. That's just how that costume is made, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, like, I mean, this this is really the same as the other James's question with making and buying. It's, it, I mean, there is no cheating, is there? Yeah. I, I guess it's, it's a personal... When, it, com when, it, when it comes to this hobby, the only cheating you can really do is to pay me to make you something and then go into a, comp a contest and say you made it and I don't get caught because I was the judge. That's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um. uh, just to clarify, just, just the way I was looking at it, I'm not talking about him because I realise <laughs> I'm, I'm making it look like no. But like, even from my perspective, like I've, I've made the vast majority of things, but I've also had an awful lot of people help me. Like Meg helped me stitch all my tech priest robes. Like, You're also a masochist. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> That's, I'm not even going to argue there. But like, I spent two days with her, and she was there, and she was working on her sister of battles just before COVID. And then she was like, stitch there, stitch there that's wrong, restitch that. And I was there like, yes, of course. And I figured it all out, but then I was wearing it. And then she's like, also, I'm the judge. 
and I was like, well, there's, it's very there's, <laughs> there's an aspect to this that I was guilty of, and like most things in life, is that you never really can judge until you're behind the other side of that. So yeah. when we were starting out, we were just doing fun. We might have looked at 3D printed stuff and said, oh, they're taking the cheap work. But there's a different amount of work to that. Mm -hmm. You know, some of those people are making the files, some aren't. You don't know by looking at it. So that, again, this is why competitions are a different, different conversation altogether because you yeah. get a bigger insight into it. But at the end of the day, if they're putting in the work, I mean, if, if that really mattered, Marie wouldn't want anything because she's been doing it for four years and done 18, was it 18 weeks I'm of work according to the nine costumes? Probably. Yeah. It's even. <laughs> <laughs> Look, at the end yeah. of the day, we're putting in the work there, one way or the other. Yeah. That's it. Marie, what do you guys think? Um, I think, I'm not sure about yourself, but I think out of us, for me, I started doing the 3D printing earlier because I've, I've done it from college. So I've done designs and I started, started in the gotten the I think I'm one that got the 3D printer earlier, whatever kind of thing. But I had a few comments in relation to that saying, you're cheating or whatever. But I genuinely, I can, I had proof that I've designed this. I get the whole thing of people saying it's 3D printing, but until you actually 3D print something and start working on it and finish it, you don't realize much work goes into it. Like if you do foam, it's grand, it's smooth. 3D print out. Um, no. They, they do, they genuinely <laughs> take a lot of work and everything as well. So there is that aspect of it. So there's a lot of work that goes into them. But for me, as I said, I had people saying that I was cheating and you're just whatever. But I genuinely had made the files. So I'm going back to my Cassandra from Assassin's Creed, the sword, the weapon I have for her and stuff like that. Different bits like that that got designed by someone else. But then there was other parts as well that I designed or you had it. And I was like, no, and I, I had bought files before. I was like, no, they're just not going to work or they weren't actually done properly. You spend how much money on things and when you go to do it, they don't work. So I'm just, you know what, I'll just redo it myself. And as I said, I've done 3D in college and stuff. so. I have that behind me. So you're kind of like, here's my diploma. This is proof that I can do what I've said I've done, as well as my images. Um, but I get where some people, to some extent, are coming from with 3D. But if you're happy with it, and it's different if you're going into the likes of the pros or anything, because you have to have your images, you have to have everything showing that you did what you did. Mm. If you say it's 100% made, it has to be 100% made by you. Um, so when it comes to that, but other than that, I, I go back to the whole thing as well, that if you're happy with it, then, then go with it. And if there's a lot of work in 3D stuff, don't be under any illusion that there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah like I actually changed my opinion recently because um, up to recently, I never used 3D printing in my costume. So for example, my Garrus costume, it was 100% made like without any 3D printing. So it's just EVA foam for mask. I did sculpting, I did like casting, you know. Uh, but I actually recently started going into 3D modeling. And that's when I realized that it might be trickier than I yeah. thought. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah. So yeah, I think like if people actually take time to model something, then print it, then sand it, then you know prime it, it's just as much like it's just as valid as mm -hmm. making EVA foam costume or like whatever else you know sewing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it depends really because again, if you just buy a, a file or just buy a three D print and don't put any effort into that, I think that is a little bit cheating. If you actually put a lot of effort, that's fine, it's totally valid. You did a lot of work to achieve that effect, you know? And again, it's 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 really hard, especially like if you've seen uh, raw 3D prints, you know they're not smooth, you know they're like, they won't work as they are. <laughs> you have to do something. So yeah, it, it depends, you know? <laughs> One other aspect to that as well that's different to, you know, the, it, a lot of this comes down to ignorance. If you don't know how to do a certain thing, you might think, mm -hmm. oh, that's that's easy, whatever. Yeah. But that's a very good point. There's a difference to, with, when it comes to 3D printing and other things. It's still so new. There's a lot of people that mm -hmm. still don't un, don't understand how this is actually possible. How does this machine move around and create a physical object? And that adds a lot to it. Because when you don't understand something like that, a lot of people are immediately jumped to stuff that did all of that for you and you did nothing. Yeah, you just mm -hmm. assume. Yeah. Whereas it's yeah. very easy for someone to understand it's, oh, you took the pieces and glued it together and it came out amazing. That's a lot easier to process. And it seems interesting that foam in the cosplay community has really become the standard, which... Because it's accessible. Now. Which is very yeah. accessible. And I think is this conversation also partly about accessibility 
of certain equipment. Because a 3D printer, realistically, you can get them very, very cheap. Yeah. But a good one is going to cost you an awful lot more. Resin printing is going to cost you an awful lot more. And then manufacturing it on a bigger scale just adds yeah. massive costs. But there's also the whole thing as well. They always need work. There's, you, no matter how much you spend in a 3D printer, it still it's needs still going maintenance. To need that work still needs. There's no yeah. print and go. Yeah. Yeah. I have three at home and only one's working right now. That's yeah. always the way, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The 3D printer. Oh. Like, <laughs> why don't you love us? Like, yeah. but like, you've obviously done, you, you went to university to learn sculpting. And like, oh, yeah. you have, like, we're going to bring up a picture of your garage. <laughs> Um, because I'm sorry, guys, you can't see it, but it, it's just mind just blowing. We all want to see Garris. <laughs> we all want to see Garris, but like you hand sculpted that entire head and yeah. the feet and everything. And like I could argue, some people were like, "Oh well, whenever you're doing that, that's the level that we would expect." But like, how dare you not pick your own clay out of a marsh? Or how yeah. dare you not? <laughs> how dare you not like create your own material? Like no, you know, too. I actually yeah. had people assume that I 3D printed the whole costume, the mask, everything. I did. You know? To be honest. Like uh, and a lot of people were like, oh, you probably just like uh, found a file, three D printed, and that's it, you know. So yeah, I think uh, first of all, most of people don't know the story behind the costume. Mm -hmm. So for example, that's why sometimes people can disagree with judges on cosplay competitions because judges know much more. They actually talk to these people. They actually ask them questions and okay, how did you do this? How did you do that? And again, sometimes you can think that like some part of the costume was done in, in one way or another. But the reality, you know, it may be very different. And again, like for my Garris costume, yeah, it's, it's like hand sculpting, all of it, you know, but it's so easy to assume that it wasn't held hand sculpting, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go something a little bit less exciting. Injuries. <laughs> I love talking about injuries. Of course, you um, burned your hand yesterday. I did. I absolutely mangled myself, um, but I didn't want to damage the convention center and pay the bill. So, from Sophie, uh, sorry, no, it's not from Sophie. Uh, get away from here, Sophie. Yeah. Sorry, it's from Hannah. What is the worst injury you have received from cosplay? And are you willing to bleed for your art? Disc sander. Mental. <laughs> a disc sander. Yeah, I was doing something on the belt sander, and she only has the disc on the side. Yep. And I couldn't get in, so I went to move it, and I forgot the disc on the side, and grabbed it, and got 60 grit. I lost about 7% of the skin on my hand. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I just, Fair enough. I can stab myself a million times. Yeah. Where were you at this time? Oh, he's probably there with him. <laughs> <laughs> Sticking his hand further in. <laughs> well, I did Warhammer before this, so I, I, at this point, stabs are nothing. You get used to that. I yeah. worked. I worked in in retail in a warehouse. The paper cuts, all that stuff, nothing. And I'm Burns. You get used to it, but uh, that send, sending yourself. That's definitely bad. That that must be Jack of the Hoffler. Like just bandage no. it up, or. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man. It's if fine. If my father taught me anything, a bit I, of super glue, and you'll be grand. Suffer. Why we go to hospital? We workshops are just hospitals. <laughs> <laughs> They're just not clean. Well, that's the actually original use of super glue was used in the yeah. Vietnam War to seal wounds. If you didn't know that, don't do that. It's a really <laughs> stupid idea, but you can. But don't. don't. You can. Do you know what a chainsaw was originally made for? It's not appropriate for this conversation. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What was the worst thing you had to What's the worst thing that happened to me? I don't know. I always somehow. To be honest, more of your injuries are to do with the grill. She's a habit of sticking her hand in and going, What's that smell? Oh, it's me. It's my burning flesh. Um, One day you're going to pull your hand oh, out and be like, yeah, like Actually, that smell thing, awoken something in me. The worst injury I have caused uh, while doing cosplay work was not to myself. It was to the laptop. They oh, all yeah. bought me for my birthday about two months later. And I knocked the heat gun over and it's like, it's fine, there's nothing there. Oh, and then no. I can smell the burning laptop. A hole it's in okay, it still works. It just doesn't look as nice. <laughs> <laughs> battle damage, lad, battle damage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't know. Like, I, I could cut myself, I burn myself, got pins like scraping down my leg when you're I forget to get my costume. Toe. The pin in my toe was probably the most one that I like, it had come off my costume and I stepped in it and oh I didn't no. know there was a pin in my toe. So I continued to walk and it got further into my toe. And I tried to pull it out oh no. and it wouldn't come out. And then I had to call for Jay to come down to like. Give my foot to take the pin out of my toe. That's probably the worst. To be, to be honest. No, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> the, most, the most damage I've probably done permanently is to my hairline from wigs. That, that's why it's slowly going back. But we've injured ourselves so much that the point where Andrew, when Andrew was hospitalised for nearly cutting his heart through his finger, we're like, oh, you and your boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> we're desensitised to it at this point. What about you guys? 
Um, I think we've all had the where, what, where's Wally moment when you drop needles or pins and stuff like that on the ground from when you're sewing and sticking things here, like, oh, not again, <laughs> kind of thing. I've only had that the other day. Um, but my thing, I suppose, is with the heat gun, and I had it, my little heat gun, kind of when you put it sitting up, it has a wee stand, and then not realising, I want to use that, like, 30 seconds later, reaching over, and then the, the, the mark on my arm, which is probably just about faded, and that's from quite a while ago. Um, so I think that for me is, is one of the, the bigger ones that left a mark and it was just like nasty. But yeah, that's that's. How do you even explain that? Huh? How do you even explain that to someone? That's it. People are like, what what's it's going trendy. on? Why why do you look like you've got? Yeah, and it's just like, oh, just just a heat gun. Why why what? There's, yeah, there's no unless kind of cosplayers and stuff like oh heat guns. That's grand. That's fine. I think we've that's all had the whole thing of the dremel and stuff sure, like that. It's only six hundred degrees. Back, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, it's faded now, but it was there. It's like a battle scar, a battle damage. We all love that kind of thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't have an uh, impressive story of some. You know? <laughs> uh, obviously, it's like some cuts and burns. Uh, like the worst thing that happened to me probably was when I burned uh, a small portion of my hair. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> your poor hair. Uh, like it wasn't like you know too bad. It was bad, but not too bad. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, basically, uh, I was sculpting a piece, and then I covered it with like um, compressed air to cool it, you know, to make it harder. And what I basically did afterwards, I didn't wait like proper time for that, like you know, because it's basically like gas, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and the thing I was doing also, I, w I used a lighter to kind of like you know smooth some areas of the sculpt. <laughs> oh, gosh. So yeah, I went there with a lighter. It did <laughs> in my face. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's a combust. great story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I, was I, I built a bomb. She built like an air burst. <laughs> now who brought it up? Uh, yeah, well, don't try this at home, please. Cosplay is dangerous. Yes, it is. Oh god, okay. Um, we got one here from Peter, which I think is very, very topical. Uh, we've seen signs all over different conventions discussing consent and cosplay at many events. Uh, this is a very large event. There is tons of banners around. How do you think people should deal if, if a cosplay is not consent situation arises? Uh, has the situation ever arisen? Or what would you do in that situation to kind of encourage people to talk, to, uh, talk about it or talk to who should they talk to? Um, I think, if, yeah, if, if you yeah. talk to anyone around, um, I think you, you see, as a cosplay and cosplay, there's a lot of people who will be like, if you want to avoid someone or anything, come over, talk to me, pretend that you know me. I have no issue anyone doing that. Many people have done before, not just in cosplay community. Um, I've had other issues and other people do before when I'm in uniform and stuff. Um, but I think around here, for me, I obviously, I'm, I'm armor, I don't necessarily do revealing cosplays or anything like that, but for, I didn't even realize, but a couple of years ago when I was here, at DCC and my Cassandra, someone had taken my spear off my back. And I didn't realize until someone was like, is that not yours way, way over there? Oh, someone um, just wandered off with it. Someone just took it, like it was on my back, so it was attached to my back because I, I didn't use it. So it was actually attached, it was like elastics around it, so it wouldn't, so someone had taken it out and off and I wouldn't have realized because it's not part like attached to me, it was attached to the back of the quiver. Um, Wild. And that was it, because there was no one else to be like, is that not yours over there? So for me, that kind of, I had no idea who they were, and they they just, they blatantly was like, oh yeah, can you have that back? I was like, there was no questions asked, no whatever, I didn't realise it was gone. Um, so for me, that was my biggest kind of, look, it, it wasn't major, but still it shouldn't have happened. You don't start taking things from people without permission, apart from your, if you're him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> um, but other than that, for me, that was the main thing. I have seen other things now that have had people come over to me, but it, it shouldn't happen. It does happen. And the same, I think, even with DCC had put up online about asking people if you want photographs. And realistically, I'm going to say 90% of this weekend have asked. You do see, okay, families or whatever, and they're just taken from afar and things like that. But for the most part, I think, yeah, it's, it's been good from what, been I've, what I've seen and what I've experienced. We've been fortunate here because of how laid back in communal Ireland generally is. We haven't had too much bad stuff. But the one thing I always said, there was one situation I'll remember, I won't mention the event, but remember it was here. 
Give him a cunt. <laughs> oh, I wasn't going to mention it, but yes. <laughs> Keywords. Yeah, there, that was, one. <laughs> there, was, there was a guy at GamerCon yeah. taking upskirts during the competition, you know and the, the, the GamerCon staff did nothing about it. But so the cosplayers yeah, did. The girl, like the, two, two of the cosplayers came, uh, dressed as Captain America, and grabbed him and poked him out the door. Sorry. So no just, <laughs> yeah. just yeah. say it, like if anything ever happens, uh, say it to someone, anyone. This, you is, know? this is even outside of time, just someone wrongs you tell somebody yeah yeah you know mm -hmm. and if you're feeling uncomfortable in a situation you have the power to walk away you know just remove yourself from that situation go to someone you trust you shouldn't be in that situation initially but yeah. do yeah exactly yeah, yeah. you have the power no, to take no that control back yeah yeah it's a full sentence yeah i feel like in ukraine in ukrainian cosplay community it's not a big problem but of course you know in any any country any like community there are bad people there are very rude people mm -hmm. who do very rude stuff and you know cosplayer or not you know you can just become a victim of those people and again uh, I think that partially comes from this mindset that a lot of people still think that cosplayers are like you know free animators they should entertain you mm -hmm. you can do whatever you want with them uh, but again like I don't think in Ukrainian cosplay community we ever had like this major problem you know, s sometimes like bad things happen, but nothing too outstanding. And uh, again, like we, we had this thing, like, like we talked to each other. I feel like my friends didn't experience it. I didn't experience it. I feel like a lot of people were really uh, respectful. Uh, when I was in my Gary's costume, for example, uh, a lot of people, like people wanted to take photo with me. They would ask me, always ask me, always ask me if they can hug me, always ask me mm -hmm. if they can like, uh, I don't know, take my rifle, for example, for a photo, you know. Uh, so yeah, I feel like, you know, it's just in general about people uh, being polite and some people not being polite, you know. The, the funny thing is the internet has actually helped because a lot of these people are now sticking to, you know, 4chan and their subreddits because they can be brave behind their keyboard where no one knows where they are. Well, true. It's like, why, why, why risk where everyone knows where you are when you can go and make your smart comments like, like a moron, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, I've, I've, I've been very, very Keyboard fortunate. Keyboard warriors. I, I, I guess as a man, I've never had to face anything like that. You know, but it kind of helps me build like a block shit house. But like, you know, it's, no one's ever really gotten up close. Like a few people have kind of touched a few things and you're kind of like, that's okay. Like I'm not, I'm not going to like mm. lose my, lose I my saw Kevin yesterday. I saw the way he looked at you. <laughs> 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 yeah, just strapping into the costume is the worst part. It's kind of like, you're, you're going to have to fish around. Yeah. For, uh, you're going to have to like, it's like, you have to go down into the robes and like fish out a bunch of line. And then it's like, where is it? It's like, it's just down there. Just you know? going. You're just going to have That's it. That's a different going. story. There's very strange photos of her getting ready with various people, especially Gimli. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're just trying to get it all There's a photo time. Molly has of her standing like this, oh. sorry, half naked with her arms up, with a bag over her head, while Michaela's trying to get her Gimli armor over. Michaela. <laughs> Shout out to Michaela over there. Yeah. But that's a whole different story. Perfect. Okay, so one or two last images and then we'll go out to the audience because I can see you're all sitting there face breath. Uh, from Martha, which is a great name. Uh, do you think body image plays a role in what people cosplay? Is there something you would definitely not cosplay and something that you're like, oh, I could totally pull that off? It does uh, play a role. It shouldn't. Um, there's, I have a, there's a friend of ours here. I'm not going to name names because, you know, that's their, it's their story to tell, but they exclusively cosplay characters that they do not fit the normal image with. They have mad respect for them. And they, they do it better than most other people. So why, why does it fucking matter, you know? At the end of the day, there's no point in having d illusions. Nobody here looks at you and thinks, oh, that's the real person, except for kids, but they're going to think that regardless, <laughs> yeah. you know? That's the thing. It's like, does it really matter, you know? Um, I mean, everyone has their rules as well. I'm never going to sh fully shave for a costume. I've done fully shaving characters with the beard. No one's complained. Well, not to my face anyway, but... <laughs> He didn't shave his beard. I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've made friends because of that beard. Uh. <laughs> beard friends. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, no, I'm not the weirdo. Kieran's the weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that one. <laughs> the other one. Pretty. <laughs> and what about you, Emily? Like, it, sh it shouldn't, but like, it definitely does play a factor in like no. certain characters. No, there's a good story behind that. Because you, you know the way she's only 5'1". Oh my god! And someone told her you're too you're too tall to be Gimli. <laughs> oh, 
the only character she's done that she's actually taller than. I don't even know what to say to that. Yep. I'm sorry <laughs> that I'm not clinically short, sir. <laughs> but th there are people who have, like, uh, I, I, I've seen a few people, I think it was last March, I was in the tech race and I was wandering around, and someone came up to me and was like, uh, Sir, your cog is incorrect. Uh, it's supposed to be facing the other direction. How and dare I, you have real flesh now? I know, my God. <laughs> and I was just kind of like, and people online were like, where's your mask? And I'm like, I die. And then they're like, it's no excuse, like. Get away from yourself, like. Look, at the end of the day, the only person that should have body reservations about their costume, not they should, but the only person that has a right to is the person in it. It's the person they in shouldn't, it. And that's, yeah, that's, that's what it takes for yeah. them to be comfortable in it, then that's their business, you know. It's the same thing when people say, you know, I started working out for this costume and people give out to me saying you don't need to. It's like, yeah, no, they don't. But also, if they want to use that as motivation, that's also their business. Yeah, I think it is but down to let, individual. Let people you know? do what they want to do if it's not hurting anybody else. If yeah. you're self-conscious, like, you know, there's certain things I wouldn't do because I'd be self-conscious of something. You know what I mean? Like, it shouldn't really happen, but, like, it does. But, like, you know, I think it, it is down to what you're comfortable in. Yeah. And, you know, what yeah, you want to push. I, I, actually, the only other one I remember is uh, a certain someone from a cer certain groups that are at certain times here giving about when you were doing Cara Dune because your arms weren't big enough. Oh, yeah. Gotta lift them weights. And then yesterday I got oh, told no, my arms are better than Thor's she, arms. She put them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. <laughs> they really don't. They're string noodles. Yeah. <laughs> what about you guys? Um, for me, I suppose I, I I'm one that I prefer to be in armor to cover up, and I, I I'd look at myself that I don't necessarily have any kind of body confidence issues, whatever. But I think to some extent we all do. Oh yeah. We do. Definitely. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a horrible does. way yeah. to be, and it's whatever. And they always say for women and all these magazines and all that sort of stuff. I don't read or anything like that, but um, yes, it, it is 100% there. I think we all, as I said, we all have it. Um, but in the cosplay community, it's that you do what you want to do. You do you, yeah. You um, do. There's ones out there, and I'm genuinely like, you're like, like, and even not necessarily to do with size or anything like that, you're just like, fair play to you for doing that. It's absolutely fantastic, absolutely love seeing it. Um, but for me, I am one that I would prefer to be in armor, and I have done that for most of my ones. And even I was thinking today, because it's so warm and because it's, it's so busy, do I bring one of my smaller, which is not many of them, cosplays, um, my Fallout ones, stuff like that. I was like, no, because I'm not actually happy in how I haven't worked in it in a while. I ha I need stuff needs to be done, but I'm not necessarily happy how I kind of look in it. And I'm like, no one cares. They see a Fallout cosplay, they see whatever, they see the deck claw on my shoulder. That takes away from anything, that little deck claw. 3D printed. Um, not, God damn not designed cheater. by me. Not designed by me. Um, but, uh, yeah, it is out there. It shouldn't be. It is. It always will be. But for me, it, it does. It impacts. And I will continue to do armor because I am mad and like building things too. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel like it's a very personal matter, you know? Because, for example, I think that you can do whatever you want. Again, like, if you like this particular character, but again, like, you know, your body characteristic don't suit the character, it's fine. Like, mm -hmm. you just want to have a good time. You just want to cherish this character and do something something fun something you know to kind of like honor this character you know but for example personally me there are definitely characters that i wouldn't cosplay because i just know that i wouldn't be able to pull it off but it all comes to you know perfectionism mm. yeah and i'm very demanding of myself in my costume so if like i am not satisfied with the result i can get i wouldn't start it you know mm -hmm. and again like for example I'm no alien, you know? <laughs> I cosplay Garrus, I'm Should no alien. No. <laughs> I'm just from Ukraine, guys. <laughs> you know? Uh, but again, I, I knew that I have certain ways to pull that off, mm -hmm. so I did that. And I don't think that other people have to do that, you know? Like, again, if you just want to have fun with this particular character, just do that, just go for it, you know? Yeah, I, I, I my, with, this, with this cosplay, when I originally put it up, the two weeks or whatever by doing it. Um, the image I put up in the character within Diablo Immortal is is a black character. And she has like, uh, she's loads of plaits and stuff in her hair. And I I got a message from someone that I genuinely didn't think I'd get a message from. I was like, are you gonna go full with this? And I'm like, what do you mean? Because it was, oh, <laughs> and that was the whole thing. And I was like, no, but I, I don't get that. And some people are like, but that's how the image is. That's how exactly how you should but look. But it's your interpretation. No, it's not. It's my interpretation yeah. of this. And I, you know, that's not at all. I want to do this with the armor and the fact that I want to make the huge shield, which is back here. 
since the original Diablo cosplays, and now there's a newer game out, and I, I like the look of this armor compared to other ones, and that's what I decided to make. But that's it for, you get messages, like it wasn't a comment, there's no point going looking for it, um, it was a message to me, and I just genuinely wasn't expecting anyone to come up with something like that. But here we are. We're so but but, but again, like you can improve on the design as well. For example, like you can add something that's not in the original, you know, mm. character design, mm -hmm. or you can just like change some stuff. Because it, again, it's just creation process. You're just yeah. having fun. You just want to like. Uh, I just enjoy the process of yeah. creating the costume, yeah. and that's the most important part for me. So like. If I would like to add something, I would do that. And if that would suit the character, I would definitely do that, you know? Also, it's an unrealistic standard because 90% of the characters in things look like bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, for me, right, I'm short, as you might know. Are you? But yeah, I'm quite short. <laughs> but like, you know, I have to like She's adjust all right my right cosplays to like, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm standing up. But I have to adjust all my cosplays like to make things in proportion. Sometimes mm. I have to leave details out because like they physically, can't fit on what I want them to do, you know? So like, fair enough. <laughs> so you adjust and adapt and like, you as, do. as Jay said, things like this that you see on screen, they're made by these with like a huge budgets for certain things that yeah. are actually there. And other things that are designed I like my character is a gaming character from a top down game that you will never actually see the details. But I worked off an image <laughs> of just something and that's, but that's mm -hmm. it, they're, they're not made I to be I made. Still I still love yeah, the, the, yeah. the heartbreak to be that worried, I gave Linda when I was doing Thor. And then she saw me getting changed and I took off the armor and it was a multicolored muscle suit and I made and she's like, I really thought they were your arms. I'm so <laughs> Emily sitting there being like, I wish. I wish. <laughs> I, I'm just going to finish up before I go out to the audience with, with a quick fire question. Uh, this is from Jeff. I sent him a message this morning and he's like, you better ask him this. If you were going to wear one costume oh no. for a month, all day, every day, oh you got to no. go to work in this thing, what costume would it be that so you've made? Soldier boy. Because... Two reasons, I can pee in it, and everyone's thirsty for soldier boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good answer, actually. What about you, Emily? What I'm wearing, I guess, just clothes. Not Gimli? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to die? <laughs> I know, but it'd be in character. I wouldn't be what? able to pee. Okay. Michaela had to, like, help me undress at the end of the day because, like, so I physically can't get out of it. I can barely move my arms. Like. Matt, fact for you, my N7 armor weighs less than one arm of her Gimli. I don't have arms. <laughs> we discussed this limp noodles. Yeah, limp, limp noodles. noodles. <laughs> Spread your side project. Over to you. Um, this has to be. I have to be able to sleep and everything as well. Oh, uh, like your your I'm whole screwed. day. Like, I'm like screwed. you're sitting there having a cup of tea. People are coming over, and you're like, everything is normal. I can't do this. Um, I'm gonna have to go for my smallest one, which is either Scarlet from Mortal Kombat, possibly, or my Fallout one. If I can take the skull off so I can see. Yeah. That, that's, that's the other, not, I can't. I can't, I wouldn't be able to function because we're all huge, it's not bigger than this. The skull's just like a teddy. Huh? A teddy with <laughs> massive horns. Massive horns and 3D printed. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's go fall it. Let's, let's prepare for anything that's going to come. Yeah. I, I feel that, uh, not Garrus, not, no. not Garrus. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> no. Yeah, that wouldn't go down well. I will die. <laughs> how, how else are you going to calibrate in your sleep? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I feel like, I feel like that uh, Jojo, like I have Jodor from Jojo and Sir Platinum. Yep. And I would rather go for Jodor just because, you know, it's much easier to put on, put off and, you know, mm -hmm. Star Platinum is a great costume, like, it's very easy to wear, I look impressive, like, if anyone asks me something, I j can just say, like, ora ora, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> but yeah, the one problem is bathrooms, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so probably Jotaro. <laughs> yeah, I can only get in and out of one costume by myself, so it would have to be that one. <laughs> and it's the plague doctor, so oh. like, I think it'd be grand. You'd just be walking around and you'd be like, hi Nathan, people be like, that's Nathan. <laughs> he's eccentric. <laughs> and then people would be like, and he's doing it so well, he's in character all the time. He just looks like that. <laughs> but listen, that's predicted it. predicted everything. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. If anyone has any questions from the audience for our guests, please ask them now. Shoot. I'll just re-announce that. From the contestant's perspective. Yeah, or from the judge's perspective, anything. 
Mm. I'll just re-announce that so we get it on the mic. Do you have any suggestions for pre-judging for cosplay competitions? Yes, we used to do panels on this. Number one tip, if you know there's something wrong with your costume, do not mention it. <laughs> Judges probably will notice, but don't take that for granted. Never, I never say, I, I did this only with this, or I just did this. Because you just downplayed everything. And Make everything just sound more exaggerated to your like, benefit. Like, you try know? have stuff prepared that you can show, like, what, what the judges are interested in seeing, the techniques that you've done and how you've made it. We don't really want to hear about why, you know. We don't want to hear that you're, you know, you're in love with the character, blah, blah, that, you know. We want to see, like, this is how you made this part, this is what you did to adjust this, you know. So maybe have some things, even if it's on your phone, like on, you know, just on your gallery, make a folder with some, like, work in progress pictures. It'll help you talk about it and have it. I always try and work from, like, you know, bottom up. So think about, you know, you can talk about your shoes, you can talk about your legs, you can talk, you know. So have stuff prepared for that so that, you know, if you have a limited time, you can just ramble on and you can tell and... You know, even the smallest thing, bring it up. We want, we love hearing about it. You know. Yeah, I think for certain cosplays, they'll they'll let you know you got a minute, you got two minutes, whatever you have, rehearse it. Mm -hmm. And as I said, and said, either start from like the top down or whatever. If you want, and if you think you're going to want short in time, what is your best piece? If your yeah. helmet is your best piece, start at your head and work your way down, or whatever you may think it is. Another thing that I've done, um, I haven't judged a whole lot for entering certain things, is I do a lot of work on pro art images. It's also great as well for people to ask you, how'd you do this? Here's a couple of images, here's some information. But um, in relation to that, I usually have a folder. So even when I'm working, before I do anything, even this cosplay, I have a thing of reference images, and then I'll keep my patterns and everything in it if I need them for later on. Um, so loads of work in progress images, any videos and stuff you have. Um, if you do a little folder, if you want to bring it with you, it can be easier as well for them to look through while they're talking to you. Your samples of your fabrics and stuff that you've used or anything like that, it's great and it's also great to look back on. It's like, what did I use for that one? Because I really want to use it for this one as well. Or what technique did I do? Because you get foggy over time. But um, yeah, for things like that, just work to your strengths and stuff like that as well. And if you're a motion press or you've done a lot of work or a lot of techniques on one certain thing, start with that get your high point because you, you are time for things like that and especially if there's quite a lot of people entering and um, so that would be my tip for them okay <laughs> actual cosplay contest speaking right now yeah. judge speaking right now <laughs> yeah so uh i think number one tip you know judges are also stressed i know like people mm -hmm. entering the pre-judging they're stressed. Everybody like wants to highlight the, the best of their costume, but at the same time, you're just nervous because people will be like looking, checking, you know. And again, I think it's true. Judges are trying to find some imperfections because we have to be harsh. We have to be harsh because, again, it's a competition. Like cosplay is about fun, but competition is a competition, you know. Mm -hmm. But again, judges are also nervous about this whole situation, you know. Because again, uh, as a cosplayer, you just like you just want to know like, oh, how did you do that? You know, it's just interesting. It's interesting for me because maybe there are some techniques I didn't know existed. You know, and there's still a lot of stuff, especially for me about suing. Like suing is a nightmare for me. You know, uh, so I'm really interested to see what people can do and how they can do it. So you know, just highlight highlight the best of your techniques. Highlight the best of uh, like pieces of your costume. And also be honest, please, because, you know, mm. saying that, yeah. again, like you did the, the whole costume while, you know, it was bought or pieces of it were bought, like, it's just no good, you know? And again, you're cheating on other people who actually, like, took effort and put, put a lot of time and effort to make certain pieces of their costume. So again, just be honest, because we're all here part of community. We're all friends here. We're just sharing this weird hobby, you know? <laughs> Special guest, ladies and gentlemen. Perfect. Does anyone else have a question here? We just try, we're just we going to try and quick fire through these because we've got about seven minutes, so we can all just oh, kind of <laughs> super quick fire. Go. Is there any particular skill as well that you call for yourself to do everything you know, big, your drawing, the armor? Is there any particular skill that you're so proud that you have kind of failed for like each of you? Do you have any one piece of advice that you would give that's a great skill that helps you become a better cosplayer? What, what kind of skill are you proud of? 
proud of. Each proud of. Yeah. I, for me, just definitely, it's chatting and <laughs> just talking to people because so many people have helped me do stuff like and it's great. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's so good because so many people are like, have so much better skills and like, you can kind of like learn from them and then they'll teach you how to do something and then you can yeah. kind of go run with it. And if you're trying to do everything yourself and you're trying to be you know, an island, you'll never, you know, you'll always kind of be somewhat good at things, but then you'll have such lack of knowledge and everything else. And you find people who are great at things and you learn from them and that, that's how you get better. So that would be for me. Weather is my one. It's the one people keep saying, you need to tell me how to do this. Because dirt, dirty shit looks better. I can't, like, it's, I, it's, I'll be honest, I can't pick one. I it's realistic. <laughs> like, I had to thank that guy down there because he has to me for fire. years going, no, more, more of it, more of it. <laughs> I can't pick one. I just, yep. I, 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 if something comes out really good, it's like, you know. That was great. Yeah, like, oh, I did that. You, you know, I saw that. You oh, well, I did that for, yeah. you, you, know, have oh. the, you have the patience to iron things flat. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. We'll go with that. Yeah. Fair enough. You guys? It's bad, but I can go for my weakness, which is sewing and then um, doing patterns and foam. Like, it, it's great when you do a pattern for something and you're like, you put it to foam and it works perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, but for things like that, I suppose uh, it's practice and everything. But my the foam smithing for certain things, they don't work out, and when something does, incredible. And hi, Ian, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like it's just it's just really great to learn something new every time, and that's what I try to achieve in every single like in most of my costumes. I just try to like implement new techniques that I can like you know learn that I can use later. So. I think like the, the latest one that I'm proud of is probably making a chain mail because, mm. you know, like, like that's actually making something solid, you know, making something durable, making something very authentic as well, because there are different uh, ways to kind of like, you know, imitate chain mail in a costume, but making actual chain mail is so much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> My fingertips disagree. Oh, you made all that. Take but I also, I also feel like, you know, it's, it's just about learning and every, every, every small skill that you learn may be your new favorite. Mm. I think like uh, my other favorite is also sculpting, but that's just because I love sculpting, you know, and uh, making some like small details, some like design elements, sculpting them yourself is just so satisfying, especially when it comes out like, you know, just right, just how it should be, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think those are my two favorites. Perfect. Yeah, just, just, just go for it. Just learn new techniques, you know? Mm -hmm. cool. We'll take one final question and then we've got to we've got to wrap up. This lady right there. Any tips for making uh, what kind of like creating the illusion of being trapped in metal? Easy question. <laughs> Any tips for creating the illusion of really shiny metal? Alcott. Sand until you want to kill yourself. Like that. <laughs> yeah. You, you need to make sure it's all prepped first and prepped to the best it can be. It also depends on the surface and stuff as well, yeah. what kind of tools and stuff you have. If, shall we say, 3D or foam, depending on, again, how you've prepped it and everything. If you have an airbrush, is it Alcad? Alcad? Alcad. Lethal stuff, though, you gotta be really careful with yeah, that. Yeah, but like that, it gives it the, a so great chrome maker. effect. Um, there are spray paints and stuff out there, which is where it depends on, as well, what you're using foam, it's gonna crack. But there are certain things out yeah. there. Um, and then at the end of the day, if you wanna weather it up a bit as well, it's not too bad. Yeah, I think that it's also about like the surface you're using it mm -hmm. on, you know, because for example, if you really want something that really, really looks like metal, it should be solid, you know. Mm -hmm. So for example, with foam, it's really hard to achieve that mm -hmm. uh, look of real metal mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. again, if, if it bends even a little bit, that will just ruin it. That will just destroy all the painting work that you've done, you know. Mm -hmm. So again, it's also, it's always a compromise between making it wearable <laughs> and making it look good so yeah like there are different spray paints like we use different paints in mm -hmm. the ukraine but i also like use some uh, like all clad i tried this one uh i tried some of the other ones i don't remember the names right now i know it's just about finding what would suit you the most because again if you cast something in hard material and like plastic or, or anything else you know you can just polish it and then any paint you put would look much better than if you use, for example, foam, you know? Because mm -hmm. you won't be able to polish foam, right? Yeah. <laughs> I tried it, it doesn't end well. 
perfect guys i think we're going to call it there we're on youtube we're on spotify and any good place that you find your podcast they make you say that when you start a podcast and uh, you can we'd love to have you we talk to makers from all over the country we've talked to cosplayers we've talked to blacksmiths we've talked to leather workers some of the uh, guys who did all the big movies we've talked to prop makers we've talked to so many people and we've a hell of an awful lot more episodes to come so thank you so much and hopefully Mike the blacksmith is the coolest man ever oh, he's so man. cool and his kid is like 16 and he's just there like with a power hammer absolutely going to town on this metal and you're just, you're just like is that not dangerous and he's like ah should be grand like <laughs> grand like and he's just there like lit, lit, lit. he's a great lad <laughs> Uh, so I've got a little announcement to make. Uh, I've got a little booth uh, in Cosplay Village. So if you would like to go talk to me, you know, and see Ukrainian cosplayers, actually, like actual Ukrainian cosplayers, what we can do, and maybe get a photo as well, you can go visit visit me there. And also, I have some links. If you want to, you can donate towards Ukrainian Relief. I would really appreciate that. Uh, and again, just. Just check out like other Ukrainian cosplayers. They're great people. Most of them are my friends, you know, and I would really appreciate that. And I would love to talk to you there as well. Perfect. Guys, thank, thank you so much. much.